Hello again and welcome to Match Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And it is four weeks to the day to election. How did we get, like, where, it was like May yesterday, I think. <laughs> I feel like feel it. I feel like September just... It blew by. Boom, yeah, gone. Yeah. Which is typical. I mean, anybody involved in politics or elections, our primary seat, our primary is way too late. I mean, the fact that there's, what, eight weeks or something between when we elect nominees and when we vote on them is crazy. Our, we really need to work in the state to move that primary back to, like, May or June or something because it's just crazy. And it would, yeah, it would it be would make- actually helpful. I mean, in some ways, I understand why, because then it means the politics doesn't consume your life for but, six or eight But I think it months. does. I think it consumes it more because there's such a small window that you have to do it. I mean, everybody, I don't know, people are out knocking on doors in the summer anyways for their primary. I just think... You could look at other states and their state primaries. Nobody's this late. We're like just weird. <laughs> that's what the, we like. New that's Hampshire. what we like. It's, it's unique, the, yeah. quirky little queen yeah. stuff. <laughs> so yeah, four weeks from today. Um, Crazy. I, I would guess. I don't. I haven't actually looked at the totals, but I mean, there's over ten thousand absentee voters in Manchester easily. Um, if you haven't received your absentee ballot, and especially if you requested it pr- prior to, you know, like last week. I do know they're trying to get those out as quickly as possible. Um, it takes time. Like, people don't think about it. It takes, they've got to put two ballots in an envelope, and, the, and Manchester's really, really good about verifying and double ver. you know, like making sure that they're this actually sending is- a ballot to somebody who is the actual person and... You know, kudos which to which the, is not what's right. happening in other states. Oh, Did you not see even the happening in other towns? Veritas. No. So there was this big expose last week. It's in the uh, district of New York where uh, it is a uh, conservative Muslim woman, I believe, who's running. I forget her name. It's not AOC. It's but not it's, okay. But um, he did this. You know, he does the guerrilla yeah. mark, uh, g- guerrilla journalism. Tactics, yeah, yeah. And. Uh, Apparently, they're buying ballots between $200 and $800 per ballot because in New York State, unlike New Hampshire, where we say you can request a ballot, but that means you're probably alive (laughs) and you filled out a form and it's going to where you live and you should get the form Mm -hmm. and you should vote. In New York State, they take the voters list, which we all know is never never up to date, right? People die, people move, people get divorced, you know, whatever, you know, come of age, what all that stuff. So in New York State, they just mail it out to everyone who's on the voter list. And so literally So if I live in so in my house four years ago, I would be getting a whole bunch of ballots for Well you'd get one there and then you'd probably get one at your new house. Well I'd get all the ballots for the people who used I mean I still get mail. Right. You know so so anyone who's ever gotten junk mail that wasn't in your name, imagine that's happening to millions of ballots across the country. But what's happening in this ward is people are going, well, I have these extra ballots, and people are going, I will buy that from you for between two hundred and eight hundred. And that's probably highly illegal. Oh, it's totally. I mean, I know in New Hampshire you can't offer anybody money for a vote. Like, like I can't even. We technically can't even offer somebody coffee at the polls on their way into the polling booth because that's electioneering. That is buy. That is, you know. Trading a coffee for your vote kind of mentality. So, hmm. and apparently they're going into polling booths with people to help them vote. And I mean, <laughs> it just, it's, 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 it sounds awful. I mean, I'm really glad that we're here in I a think state New Hampshire that, does. I mean, you know, there, it, it, no system's foolproof or. No, uh, having, having had election <laughs> problems in all my races so far, you know, nothing is, everything's far from perfect. Right. And it's but funny it, it because does usually rectify. I mean, we do seem to have a good uh, uh, checks and balances, so that when there is a problem, we can identify. Oh yeah, that that's not right. Right, we can fix that. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it was interesting, actually. Louis has been uh, munging some spreadsheets for me. I got him. I got him nerded up for this election. So he's, you know, getting all the data and he's making spreadsheets and we're comparing numbers and you know, and it's interesting to see, you know how people have voted in my district over time. You know, so 
someone like Joe Kelly Levasseur yeah. in the year where he got 49 and, and uh, Lou D'Alessandro got 50, yeah. 51, uh, there were only 6,000 people who voted on both sides. Uh, which was a very low turnout year, yeah. which was kind of interesting. So it's really, you know, you can start to look right. at the data and go, oh, oh, here is a recount. And actually, I think it was in Joe Kelly's um, year when they, he did file for a recount because it was so close. And um, and then I was looking at the recount numbers, and I was like, oh, it'd be interesting to see, like, how wrong are they? They're and not. It was, and it was like two here and feel, three doesn't there. Doesn't it make yeah, you feel good, though? I say that yeah. to people all the time. I've done so many recounts. I've done recounts at the Manchester, the city level. I've done recounts up at the state. Um, people, you know, emo it's emotional. Yep. When your name's on the ballot <laughs> and you lose by, like, you know, 30 votes, say. You're like, oh, we lost by 30. And somebody somebody who doesn't have that same level of confidence in the system says, well, you should do a recount. You and I now would be like, you're not going to find 30 votes. I mean, I, I, I did a, a recount and I found <laughs> exactly 30 votes, the exact write-in number that but, I thought right. was there. And that, but they had I think they had identified that before we did the recount, too. They caught that at the city clerk's office because they there was an anomaly where the, it just... There was, I think because maybe also because it was right in. Yes, right? it was. So, um, I can tell you what happened in that circumstance. It, that was in 2016. 18. Was it? Mm. It was a presidential year, no? Mm -mm, it Kelly was A. year? No, it was 2000. On my recount for the yeah. LP was 2018. Because that was the last time they had ballot access. Well, I know there was one one of the state elections, whether it was presidential, maybe it was, or, or last 2018, there was one where um, I believe it was in Ward 5, but maybe it was Ward 3. I can't really remember. Um, what happened was, so when the when you put your ballot in the machine, it there's a little barcode, and it reads where the dots are. It knows where the dots need to be, and that's how it counts. But if there's a write-in, it counts everything else on that ballot except for that one slot because it can count that. And then it spits the ballot out. So now at the end of the night, there could be 30 ballots with write-ins. So those, those need to be fixed. So what had happened in one ward is somebody wrote in, I think it was 2016 because I want to say it was Trump. You know, you got 30 write-ins for Donald Trump. Okay, that's not odd. Then there was 30 write-ins for Kelly Ayotte. Also, still not odd. And then there was 30 write-ins for the state candidate and 30 write-ins. And were, they were like, wait a minute. That, oh, that yeah. doesn't, th there's it, no it, way it, there was right. that exact same number of write-ins all the way down the ballot. So, so what, they'd put it They had everyone, taken this yeah. and counted the entire ballot instead of, so that's yeah. like, you know, I mean, the, po vo the poll workers are relatively volunteer. They are paid, but. It's not like there's a profes no. professional position And here. speaking of Kelly, we went to that yeah. very fancy was thing say, last really week. I was pretty cool. We got to meet Nikki Haley. She so was, was I, I was much more impressed with her in real life than I am, like, without knowing her. Um, Nikki Haley, who's the former former governor, governor of, of South Carolina mm -hmm. and the former ambassador to the United Nations. Um, yep. And it was funny because, um, I don't know if I've told you the story, but I actually went to a President Trump. Uh, meet and greet, a yeah. really small one in 2016. And when they were done, it was a thing between Trump and Anderson Cooper. And I actually was like in the middle yeah. sitting <laughs> like this. Someone texted me and they're like, you're on CNN. And I was like, what? They're like, sit up straight. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, but uh, uh, when when it was all over, everyone started lining up for their yeah. photos. And I was just like, ah, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stay. Down. I'm going to go. So I left. And then I was like, what oh, was my goodness. Yeah, you know this man is the president yeah. of the United States, and I could have had a good picky. I know with him. I went through the same thing because obviously early on I wasn't a Trump supporter. I worked for Rand Paul, and you know, so I think I just had this even after the primary. I just it just wasn't. I I've got pictures with you know what do you do with these pictures? I don't right. mind I my mean, wall, they're, but they're it's kind of neat now with like social so, media. It is, and, and, you know, and you can put but it I remember on your every time and, there was an event, if somebody's like, "Aren't you going to go and you know meet the?" And I, like, I don't, know. and I just never did. And then afterwards, I was like. That's rather weird right. of me. Yeah, I so, should have. I regret that, that, I, that I, I regret that I didn't. So with Nikki, yeah, I, was I have like, a terrible oh. picture. Of course, the girl taking pictures. Every one of them, I'm talking. <laughs> Shocking, I know. So, um, so everyone was lined up, and I was kind of like, "Am I going to stay? Am I going to go?" And then I was like, "You know, my parents live in yeah, South Carolina. They we might just think come, that was cool." You know? And my dad actually worked for the UN, yeah. which I did tell Nikki. So I didn't realize the 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 line had gone fairly quickly, and so I was like, "Oh!" So I went, and they were actually 
wrapping up. And then I dropped, you know, I I was like, oh, I'm going to name drop, which meant I'm just going to tell her my parents live in South Carolina and they're voters. So, of course, she was like, oh, we can make a quick (laughs) exception. Let me fill you, you know. And then I said, oh, my dad used to work for the U.N. back in the 70s. And she was like, oh, Oh. you know. So that was that was fun. It was it was was a good event. It was at McIntyre. More are, than a hundred. Yeah, I don't know. I've I, seen I, I, different I, posts. I think there's 99 state rep candidates who happen to be women for Republicans, um, which is huge. I, I mean, when we all win, not that all 99 of us are going to win, but let's say 99 of us won, we'd have a, in the state house, we'd have um, a quarter of the state house could be Republican women. I mean, um, and it's I but there are I, more than a hundred. I assume that maybe the hundred mark adds in the Senate. Right. You know, and it was interesting because I posted something on my social media about, oh, there are 99 women running. And of course, you know, I don't know, four idiots had to just take incredible offense to how dare we make it a woman thing, right? And I generally I, also I gener- generally don't, side. but it is kind of nice. But and I was like, oh, this is like an unusual high number and it's cool and it's like something to say. So, you know what? If you're out there and you just want to get mad about like everything. the silliest things, everything. I'm currently in a battle on Facebook between people who are supporting me because my original primary ad had I had to cut my hair myself because of COVID, yeah. right? And so I admit, you know, my hair is a little mullety in, <laughs> in the video, Who but cares? I didn't think it looked so, that bad. I was going to say, your hair never looked that bad. So now we have a battle between people who are not voting for me because hashtag female mullet and people who are voting for me because hashtag female mullet. So bring it on, voters. Bring it on. <laughs> You can't make this stuff up. You really can't. People are people are I, people are unique, unusual, amazing creatures, which is why we should let them be their own best selves and stop trying to control yeah. everything. I um Dan and I went out last Saturday, yeah, last Saturday, and put up a boatload of signs because I t- was driving to bed. It is tedious. It takes like a long time. Oh. I mean, and we we're organized. I I feel bad for candidate, you know, new candidates who are just like, ah, but um, we went out. <laughs> That's my technique. <laughs> ah! We, we knock out, you know, we never put up a, we all, all of our signs are on private property and we always knock, even like, even yeah. if it's somebody who's put up signs 10 years in a row and you never know. Um, I mean, and sometimes people change, it's not that they don't supporting you, but they don't, um, they just don't want any signs this right. year or whatever. And I'm laughing at some of the people, there's people with, um, game cams on their signs because what is up with the people destroying people's property like leave people's signs alone i mean i I, i'm i'm in some death battle with some guy on the corner of wayne and dubuque where there's a cluster of republican signs so it's you know and they're all different colors and they're all different people you know it's the ward 11 candidates so brian and amanda and king and you know and mine and they're a stay and mine gets pulled like three times a week well i had um i right now there's only three signs we haven't even put up our signs on our lawn but i had um, after the primary, I put Governor Sununu's sign in my in a flower bed that's away from the sidewalk a little bit so that it's not right on the sidewalk because I don't want to be like, hey, look at me, take my sign. Um, and then I had a Messner sign that we did stick between the fence and the sidewalk because, you know, we are still mowing and everything. Um, the Messner one has been destroyed by kids. I'm pretty sure just by kids because what, what else are kids going to do when they see the adults destroying other people's property? What are we teaching our kids? Yep. Um, and that one we resurrected a couple times, and now the bag's just shot, and I gotta get a new one. Um, but I put up Amanda Higgins, so I put them in my yard. Because yep. if you come in my yard and I catch you, you will not be happy. I can guarantee it. <laughs> you don't want I that remember to when I was a kid, I, I was the one I was like, oh, Dad, you're so embarrassing. If you threw a snowball at my father's car, he found you and took you home to your parents. <laughs> I kind of invoked my father's theory the other day. I'm like, if I catch somebody touching my signs, I'm going to take them home. to. Th-. And I was like, oh, my God, what did I become? <laughs> but I mean, leave my stuff alone. So now right. we're going to have to put, I've got to be like cre- clever. And then Halloween is the weekend. It's always the weekend before the election. But I also, so I have to allow room for the dragon, you know, so right. I have to make sure the dragon's not going to block the signs. And, yeah. So did you see, I saw the... Um, Yes, on one oh, coming up. up. Oh, yeah. I have, so I've had people call. I've had voters call me. Folks back home, mm. the right answer is no. no. And so just to remind folks, this is the uh, issue about 
moving the, the charter, com so it's to move the charter commission to move the schools <laughs> out from under the tax cap so that they can create their own taxing authority. No, that's not what they tell you, of course. No, but they that is just, what it is. From what, so the person that called me yesterday said, I got this piece of mail and what the heck, I don't think this is good. And he said, and it cracks me up because I think they're playing off of uh, For a Better Manchester, which was a Republican act. Oh, it's very, it's, active it's group very misleading. The signs, the just signs say are yellow and black. Manchester. Better and Manchester. And it says Better Manchester. Whatever that yeah, means, Better it's... Manchester. And um, they say that you're voting to allow us to amend the charter without legislate, without Concord's approval or something like that. See, just so you know. We don't need Concord's approval see, now. See, but I think the reason they're doing that is because of they the want pending taxing. lawsuit where, you know, because they wrote that they wrote that law, right? Yeah. Remember that yes. had the weird thing that said it has to be on, on these a certain dates day, yep. and whatever. So they they wrote a bad law. Pat Long. Big surprise. Just saying. Um poorly worded law. Um, and you know, and, and it was badly written. There was a lawsuit. It did the process that they laid out themselves Could, was, was not followed. Yep. So quite frankly, all of it should have just gone back yep. to the drawing board. If we do something wrong, instead of leaning into it and making wrongs wronger and wrongest, we could just, you know, be like, whoops, we made a mistake. Let's fix this next time and go forward from there. Of course, they didn't do that. And so I think what that wording is trying to get rid of that law that was written. That's what I think is going on. That law could be. So they maybe they did. They mucked up the, 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 the existing laws allowed the people of Manchester either via petition like we did with the tax cap or via the alderman to place a question, a on binding question on the ballot. They can also put non-binding questions, but binding question on the ballot. Shall we amend the charter? Blah, 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 blah. And then when you go in and vote, you would vote whether or not you want to change the charter. That we've changed the tax cap twice. So we've had three different votes, I think, on the tax cap. Um, we changed something else recently. Last year, there was a question about changing the ward lines in um, Ward 6 because they needed to shift it a little. It happens all the time. We are able to change the charter at, at the, at the boat, voting booth. But then you're right. I think maybe Pat Long's bill, which became law because nobody really was paying attention yep. to it, um, complicated that simple process and now says because i think that introduced some kind of duty I don't know. in terms of the charter whatever so anyway, it is back no. home folks no 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 it's no. a mess let's rather like scrap it all and then we have new yeah. leadership who's you know eager and healthy and spry and ready to go and rock and roll then we can like fix these problems yeah. but it's not going to create a better manchester because if no. there's one thing folks have to remember too is everyone keeps saying we need more money no but we've given more and more and more and more money and it hasn't solved the problem so we have to like put on new thinking caps and go okay if more money isn't solving the problem what are the problems and how do we solve right. them we're never looking it never seems like we're trying to solve the problem we just want to put more a money, money. band-aid on yeah it. and it's like but but you know there's that great chart from john DePietro, and mm. in fact i might throw it in one of my facebook ads uh where it is crazy you know where you just literally like you see the money is going up and the performance is going why can't we do down. that i don't know I, I did that last <laughs> week and i was like the money Walk is going like up and the schools are going down it's just yeah so it ends up we can't that's why because right. we can't yeah so you know the, the, here's the other thing too is you know no problem is insurmountable. You know, we're in these stakes where everyone is just so binary and it's like this or this, you know? It's like, well, wait. It's like, you know, maybe we don't have to pretend the stakes are so high and that everything, you know, the world's going to end if. Well, that's And like, just realize, hey, these are all things that we can I, solve. I saw, um, when I was out putting up signs, um, Stop to say hello to some a, a, a voter. He, I don't know if he votes for me every time. I, I have no way of knowing. Um, I know he's a former uh, state employee. So if you're watching, you'll know who you are. Um, he's a former state employee, so he's pro union, and that's okay. And I, like I said to him, I said, you know, here's the reality. You know, I'm I consider myself to be pro right to work. 
But I also can understand, like, that doesn't mean I can't hear a, uh, that he and I can't have a conversation and he can in, give me insight into why he feels the way he feels and what he's basing his decisions on. And that's a big problem these days. There's a lot of people who are um, elected. First, we have a bunch of people elected who are afraid to go out in public and don't want to meet in Concord. And I really don't know how we can keep doing this because what is the point of having a legislature if there is no way to actually follow the process? Here is a million dollar question. Other than actually having to vote on the budget, in the year 2020, 2021, how many laws right. do we still well, and that's, need? I mean, <laughs> to be honest, if they're going to continue to meet in a different location, this is literally logistical problems. So when you're up there, if this is the bill in front of me, you know, this bill is what I'm voting on. If I want to do a floor amendment, I run down to the first floor. I get somebody in legislative services to draft the floor amendment. I go back upstairs. They, they text you and say it's done can you come look at it you come down you look at it you run it up to the fourth floor because you have to make 400 copies and get them down to the clerk before blah 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 all this stuff how exactly does this happen if we're not in the state house it's I, not so what's happening is there's this many bills that are i guess being put forth by the the majority party those are the only things coming to the floor and there's not going to be any amendments and there's no changes it's not good. If we're going to bother them, we shouldn't even Although, go. you know, I, I was, I, I wonder if this year when we look back, we might go, oh, that was actually not a terrible year for legislation in New Hampshire because all the bad things, thanks to Governor Sununu, were vetoed, yep. right? Yeah. And I, I am more of the opinion, and this is an opinion shared by Margaret Thatcher from, you know, Prime Minister of England back in the day, where, you know, she would say, you can't really compromise on socialism because all you get is incremental socialism, right. which is, you know, you're moving towards that goal of force. And that's so important because your point about the union, mm. I am pro-union as long as it's voluntary. That's what I was saying. So if you want to be in a union, and as long as you're not forcing everyone to join your union because you say that's the only way we can collectively bargain, it's like, no, you can convince you and your friends, and then you guys can work together to try and get what you want. But you can't make everyone do what you want. If we explain to people in the shortest way to understand socialism is one group of people making everyone else do what they want. Right. So do you want to live in that world? Because I don't, because, you know, I always use this example. You're on an airplane, yep. stand at the back of the plane and watch what people are watching on their little yeah. screens. There is not one person on an airplane watching the same thing right. at the same because time. Because people are all unique. Because we're different. And so we. why are we moving towards a society where we're saying you must do these things? The more we say that, the more upset people are. And here we are in 2020 where everyone's like, Rah! and it's like, the raw is because government is too big. If we just dial it back a little bit, if yeah. we just let everyone breathe, maybe we take a few steps back, we go, what are the real problems and how can we solve them right. instead of this sort of reactionary stuff? So that was a very long way of saying, maybe this year because there wasn't the compromise and there wasn't all the amendments. Because yeah. I think a lot of times when they're doing the amendments, it, it gets we're making it worse and worse and right. worse because you're or trying to- Or we're just to... making it less bad so that more people would vote for it. Right, and, that's not and, really and the... less bad is still not good. So like, it's not gonna be a better Manchester, it's gonna be a bad Manchester if you vote, yeah. you know, so just vote no on that one. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, I did see an article in the paper today, this is just short. Um, apparently, uh, Democrat governor candidate Dan Feltz has vowed Monday that he would reject all, pa all past pay raises unless and until he signs legislation to raise New Hampshire's minimum wage. Um, so over the years, and I was in the state house when we removed New Hampshire's minimum wage, which means we just follow the federal minimum wage, which is $7.25. Part of the argument, every time somebody puts a bill in to say we have to increase the minimum wages, the, the reality is, is people in New Hampshire aren't making $7.25 right. an hour. Kids, 15, 16 year old kids do not make $7.25 an hour. McDonald's doesn't pay that. Market Basket doesn't pay that. Um, ice cream stands don't pay. It's it's just not. They pay an ice cream. Oh, I wish. <laughs> um, 
So it, there's a reason why the, the minimum wage bills don't pass. Because one, you don't need to dictate to private businesses that they must pay better because in New Hampshire, they already do. So this is one of those prime examples, right? Where it's so, like, wow, this is a wedge issue. He is, it is. And he's saying, I won't take the money, part of the salary that Governor Sununu gets until I can force every business in the state of New Hampshire to pay a different amount of money. But also, no one's paying that. So right. they're taking an issue that makes but it, it sound good. It's, right? Because part of the thing is, you, you the more people are trying to divide us yes. on things. So it's like, this is a non-issue. No one makes that. Um, I actually went and looked, and it is literally less than 1% of it's, workers it's in New little. Hampshire. It's and, and I think that's a high. Because I did look so, it up when I was on the Labor Committee so, because so, I wanted to know. I mean, this is maybe a crass comparison, but there are less... They're probably equal. No, never Don't mind. I'm not there. even going to do it. It's bad math. I won't do that. But look at me being <laughs> all mature and so, grown up. Folks. So <laughs> I just think it's funny because this is an example, though, where the difference between Governor Sununu and Dan Feltz. Governor Sununu said, no, we are not going to mandate this to every single business on every single employee in the state. Where Feltz is like, I'm not going to take part of my salary that you must pay me until you give me what I want. I'm going to stand here right. and pound my fist until I can force the private sector to have to comply. That's just and, not the way it should be. And look, businesses are struggling. We should be doing everything humanly possible. Oh Certainly, if I go to the Senate, I will make sure we're yep. not raising business taxes. No. We're not raising taxes at all. Right. If you don't want an income tax, you better be voting Republican this Oh, my November. God. You know, this is like the one time more than ever that I don't care which Republican it is. It is going to be a better choice as far as um, the economy in this state goes. I mean, I, I don't know if you saw it. I know we're almost out of time, but... So Regal Theater is going to close all of their theaters in the UK and the US. Yep. So there goes one of our three theaters in the area. And I'm like, part of the problem is, is that the, the movie companies are not releasing. There's a James Bond movie. Yeah, out, but that's that also not them release. being like, oh, now we don't want to put it out. I or, know, but it's kind of crazy. So I was like, crap. And only reason Dan and I haven't been to the movies is because there hasn't been a really that much to see. <laughs> so then I looked up Chunkies today. And Tenet is playing, and I don't really think it's might only be playing for the rest of this week. So Dan and I might have to eat not really healthy food at <laughs> I like Chunkies it. because I don't want all our movie theaters to go out of business. Imagine no. if we net. I mean, Netflix is great. We watch Netflix all the time, or and all the you know online streaming things. But I still like to go to the movie theater yes. for like action flicks. So Anyways. because choice is good, yes, and choice is freedom, yes, and choice is what we should give our neighbors. And yep. that's the polite thing to do, is yep. to let everyone decide for themselves. for themselves. What's good for you is good for you. What's good for me is good for me. As long as my things don't interfere with your things, we should all be happy. Ain't complicated. That's all we got. Okay, that was fast. Um, enjoy this week. It's supposed to be warm again. We're back into, you know, a little bit warmer temperatures. And Carla and I will be back next week with just three weeks to go to the election. We will indeed. You have a great week. Bye. Bye.